Hey folks, this is AppShocker. This is the third video on how to program with Swift. Today, we're going to learn how to write an iOS app with a login screen. So, as you know, many other apps that require you to enter a username and a password, we're going to do the same thing today. And we also have to validate or verify the data coming in um, via this login screen. So, in order to do so, we're going to create a single view application here. Let's just select this here and click on next. We're going to call our app login app. We click on next. Create your project in your default project folder. And let's just go th straight to the storyboard. Here, as I told you in the previous video, I like my storyboard a little slimmer. And I just selected that here. And boom. So now we have our iPhone sized storyboard. Good. So, um, you may already know that, but in general, what we need for a login screen are the following UI elements. First, we need two text fields because we need a text field for a username and a password. We also need a button in order to make sure that the data coming in is, is validated by some mechanism. In this case, it's a button. And what I also want to show you is um, to display um, this change. Um, via changing the string of, of a label. So if we have a, a default label saying that um, we haven't entered our credentials, I want this label to be overwritten with a text. With a text. In this case, we're going to write it a login successful or login failed. So this is our uh, test for today. As a result, it just create two text fields. We're going to look for text field again. We're going to drag and drop in here. Let's just put this here. Let's just copy paste one here. So now we got two text fields. So another thing this is also pretty common among developers is to make sure that the user also knows what he or she should enter there. So in this case, let's just check out here where it says uh, the uh, attributes inspector. Here we have something that is called a placeholder. Here, you, for instance, you can write down username. Okay, so you see that the username, this placeholder name um, appears here, so the user knows what he should do. And we do the same thing here uh, for our password. Boom. Okay, what we also have to have is a button. Let's just create one. So, uh, so I'm sorry, I just created a text field. Now we need a button. Hang on, exactly. Let's just create it here. Alrighty. And we also need a label. Let's just use this here. Okay, let's just write down you have not entered entered your credentials. Okay, so this is our default. So let's just run and compile it and then we're going to check out what it looks like whether it's it has the right size or not and this is what it should look like in general later on as you might know we also have to check out how to uh, hook up the ui elements with our code so with the people who are already familiar with my second video they already has some idea how to do this, but I will also tell you that very briefly um, why um, I'm going to do the following and why not. Okay, so you, so we see that everything went well. We can also type in something. We we'll click on button, but nothing happens. And this is also uh, the thing that you always have to take into account if you just drag and drop your elements. They don't do anything. Okay, so in order to, we're going to stop this iOS simulator here. Um, in order to make sure that everything um, is hooked up with our code, we have to go here again. And let's go here. Now we have the split screen here in order to make sure that we see what, what's happening on the story part and on the code side. Let's just click on this username text field. Let's, remember, click on control, hold it. Click on the left key of your mouse, hold it, and drag and drop it here. Okay. So we're going to call it the 
text field username. Same holds true for this here. The text field password. Okay. Then we need this label here. We're going to call it the label. And we also need to have some button. Let's just do the same thing for the button. But in this case, we're not going to create an IV outlet for our button. We're going to use an action. Now, this is important because this is the method we're going to use in order to um, trigger our verification process. So what I mean by that is the, the data coming from the username and from the password those two um, elements have to be verified by something which in this case is the following method I'm going to create. And this method will say whether the credentials are correct or incorrect um, depending on what is coming in via those two text fields. So as a result I'm going to call this uh, method um, the verify method. Okay. So and that's basically it, what we need. Now, um, in order to verify the, the text coming in, you can also do it in different ways. But in this case, we make sure that we check two texts. So a username should be, in this case, uh, the term car and the password is black, okay? So let's just write down here a variable that is called user, and we're gonna call it car, and we have a bar password, which is gonna be called black. Just remember, you can also place uh, your credentials or your credential variables at some other place, or you can also um, put them into a, a plist file or in some other um, um, file you want to use and which should, which should be more secure. Here this is just for um, to show you how to do it technically and what you have to do but um, leaving the credentials this way in your code is not the best and not this, the most secure way but it's just a way to show you how the whole mechanism works. Good. Let's just go on and yeah, so we already have our two variables we need here in order to make sure that these are the two things we have to check against. So now what we have to use is the text field username and we also have to make sure uh, that the password is also correct. So in this case we use it classic if uh, condition. And what we need is, in this case, the text field, username, and also the text of it. And we also ch check it against our variable user. And as we also have to check that the, the password is correct, we also have to do the same thing for our password, which in this case is this text field, text, password. Okay. So, and now we also need curly, bra uh, curly braces. And now we're gonna check out if everything went well with that. So we just write down if everything was correct, then print out uh, a message on the, on the logging, in the logging area. I just write down password was correct. Or let's put this way, credentials were correct. This were correct. And if they weren't correct, so it's a classic else, we're going to write down we're not correct. So let's just leave here the space, remove it. So Okay, now we have forgotten something. You have to use two equal signs because this is what Swift requires you. Back in the good old Objective-C days, you wouldn't have done it this way. You would have uh, used another uh, syntax. For instance, you would have used 
uh, is equal to for for uh, strings. Uh, this is totally different now here. So you use two equal signs in order to verify that that string here is the same as this one here. Okay, now let's just check out what if everything works right now. Let's compile it. Now we have to wait a little. And our simulator should pop up and now we should see everything. Okay, so we just send a car and went to black. And boom. So you see down here, credentials were correct. So let's just add a, a one in order to make it incorrect. And you see we're not correct. So the logic works now. Let's just click on stop. Let's just go back to the code. So you see the method worked. Now, as I told you previously, our job is also to make sure that we don't just print out the logs, we also make sure that the label, this one here, is overwritten with some text. So what we need to do now is to make sure that the text is also changed. So let's just remove the, the, the logs here. We don't need them. So what we need is the variable for our label because this is now where the music plays. Yeah. Let's just use the label, the text, and just make it write um, the credentials were correct. And now we just do the same thing here. The credentials were not correct. Also, what we have to do is if we if everything is correct, we also have to close the the virtual keyboard as well because if we don't do that, when, then we actually cannot see what was changed here because the the virtual keyboard overlaps the the string here, this label. So as a result, as you might remember, we also have to do something else, which is what what, what triggered actually our um, virtual keyword that was the text field. so we have to take care of the text field as well so in other words we also have to take care of two text fields because well from the natural flow you just enter the, your username first and then your password but there are also some people who go who do it the other way around they just start out with your password and then with their username so we have to make sure that in either case the text field um, that triggers the keyboard um, also receives a message that the keyboard should be closed. So let's just do it this way. The text field, username, resign first responder, and the text field, password, resign first responder. And in either way, we need to do it here too. So let's just compile it. Let's just check it out. Okay, car black button. Yeah, the credentials were, were correct. Let's just change a little. Button were not correct. Okay, so let's just also change something here. Button credentials were not correct. Button credentials were correct. So everything works fine, and we also clo close the, the virtual uh, keyboard. Now, what should be also done is the thing is you normally also want to highlight it highlight to your user something with colors so let's just say that the credentials were correct means that the stringer is also painted in, in green and if it's not correct it should be painted in red okay let's just also implement this here so let's just go here to our code first you have to remember that the uh, label here also has a text color property and there you have to call a class which is called UI color and you can also say it also has different properties uh, default properties like green gray black and so on and so forth in this case we use green and in the case that the credits were not correct what we want to use is rat so let's just compile it check it out whether it worked Okay, we use car, we use black, 
boom, you see the coordinates were correct. Let's just change something. Button, coordinates were not correct. So, works perfectly. So, pretty good. Um, another thing mm, re regarding labels is that let's just remove uh, the modification of the text, um, of, of the text color. For instance, if you don't want to change the color of, of the string, but you want to change the color of your label, then you can. You also have another probably like the label um, background color, and then you can do the same thing. You also call the UI color and green color. You also copy paste this here, and you can also do it with here. But in this case, it's red. Okay, now just compile it. It's car. It's black button so you see boom the label is painted in green and not the string and if it's wrong it's red so you see everything works well so I hope you like this uh, tutorial please remember subscribe to my channel in order to make me post more videos on how to program with Swift and also subscribe to to Twitter uh, like me on Facebook um, leave me a comment in the, in the comment section and don't forget, shock the world with your programming skills and make everybody else happy. Stay tuned.